Okay, I'm doing a short video on the Z80 computer's uh, short BIOS. <clears throat> um, I'm not exactly great at assembly language. I do understand essentially what most of it's doing, but I'm not a programmer, I'm not a software guy, I'm just a hobbyist, um, so this is kind of a work in progress. So bear with me if you see any, you know, things that I can do better on this, that's fantastic. But at the same time, I'm just kind of learning to do this as I go along. So not really worried about it at the moment. This code will probably change multiple times over the course of the project. However, this is the code as it sits right now. It only occupies about 150, 160 bytes, something along those lines. And we're just going to go over this. Okay. Uh, first off, um, you have your declarations, and this is at the beginning. Um, you need to define what certain uh, titles actually refer to. Um, for an example, you know, I've got my upper display, lower display, data display, and LED bar. Now, these actually reference the, um, the LED displays, okay? So, for example, the upper would be the upper byte of the address. In other words, um, the uh, first two um, seven segment displays. The lower would be the second, the data would be the um, fifth and sixth. The LED bar is obviously the LED bar that is on the main board. This isn't the one that comes out through the expansion port that I did in the, or that I played with in the second video. This is simply just onboard LED. Now these are addressed at the uh, specified addresses here. For example, the upper display is at address 00, zero hex. The lower is at 0, 01 hex, the data display is at 0, 02 hex, and the LED bar is at 0, 06 hex. Now, the second little um, set of items here is the um, data ports. So, um, whenever you see the 16 switches, what you're seeing is, is the ones on the left are obviously the high bits. And the ones on the right are the low bits. Now, you also have the switches for um, increment, decrement, read, write, run, all those. Those are the command bits. <clears throat> so, these are just the addresses for those, 0, 03, 0, 04, 0, 05. I try to keep everything real low bit here, and any peripherals I end up adding to this are going to end up occupying, um, um, you know, higher uh, address spaces for I.O. Now, I've also defined in here what the um, uh, top of ROM is, which is obviously 7FFF hex. The bottom of RAM is... 8000 hex and the top of RAM is FFFF hex. Now we've also defined a couple commands here. Um, these reference the command import, okay? And they're pretty simple. These are just the switches on the front. You have write, increment, decrement, run, read, run, uh, Z for zero out. Um, there's a step command that's been programmed in, but it is not working. So um, I've actually removed this from the code entirely. Um, the idea behind it is, is that you'd be able to step through a program, but I'm having a hard time emulating that in software. Typically speaking, you would have some type of hardware that controls how many um, you know clock cycles it runs, or it would um, you know throw up a wait flag, something along those lines. So it's not working at the moment. I may end up repurposing it, but for now, it's just one of those things where I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to actually make it work. And then, of course, you also have to reset the software reset, which I've gone over that in the past. Uh, there's a hardware and a software reset. So now this is actually the beginning of the code, and it's pretty straightforward. It starts off at address zero hex, okay, and then it jumps to boot, okay. Um, in other words, it's going to have uh, C3001. Zero, 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 
is going to be the three bytes that are there. And basically all that does is it sends it right back over to the boot, okay, which is at that specific location. Now, it does a couple things here. It just basically writes zeros to zero up the, uh, the display. And then it does boot check. Now, the boot check is pretty interesting because what it does is it actually determines um, whether or not uh, switch one is uh, set. If it is, then it'll jump to the uh, serial boot. If not, it actually jumps back to the um, normal monitor. Now, or well, it just continues on to the normal monitor. And as you can see here, there's um, the initialize routine right here, which it basically disables interrupts and it uh, clears the RAM. Now, we'll jump over here to RAM clear, and you'll have to bear with me for just a moment before I can get over there to it. Now, this is the RAM clear function, okay? And what this does is it figures out um, what, well, let's put it this way. It goes to the bottom of RAM, it just actually one address below it. And the reason is because you're already going to be incrementing it right here. I found this routine somewhere on the internet. I'm not even sure where. I discussed it with a couple guys on the Atari Age forums. Essentially what it does is it just counts up and it uh, writes zeros and does its thing and <clears throat> it's basically the same thing as a delay routine. The only difference is is that instead of you know basically just burning clock cycles it's designed to actually clear the memory out write nothing but zeros to it and that way you don't have garbage and RAM whenever the uh, program kicks off. Now once it's done it's going to jump back up to the display routine, which is up here. And it's going to basically um, load up the address and it's going to output it to the ports that um, the displays represent. Okay. Now, um, the rest of it's pretty straightforward. Of course, there's also a delay routine. It uh, delays about one quarter of a second. Or 250 milliseconds and then after that um, it's basically going to end up jumping back to the loop and I'll go to the loop now <clears throat> now this is a loop and it, it's not much in the loop because obviously this is a very basic monitor but it just is a place to jump back to and it just performs a single no op and or no operation rather and then it does something really simple. Um, <clears throat> it, for example, it's going to read the uh, byte from the um, address port, or you know, or the command port rather, and it's going to load in all the information, and it's going to check it to see if it's true. It's basically uh, subtracting it, and if it's zero, then it's going to go ahead and jump to that particular routine. If it's not zero, it goes on to the next, and it just continuously checks this over and over and over and over again. And whenever it finally decides that, um, you know, one of these actions is true, for an example, if right is true, it's going to jump to the right routine. Let me see if I can find that real quick. <clears throat> okay, here's the right routine. So it loads C with the lower N, in other words, the um, um, the uh, lower address bits uh, port, in other words, the switches on the right. It's going to um, load uh, that into HL, and then it's going to send it out to the display. Um, now, by HL, it's the address represented by HL, okay? It's not HL as in the registers. It's simply the address represented by the register combination of HL, okay? And then after that, it's gonna jump back to the display and it just does this over and over and over again. So the only time that it really deviates from this loop pattern and of just getting data, putting data out, getting data, putting data out is whenever you actually get to the um, 
run command or the Z command step or um, Z. Um, basically on these commands right here, this one is going to jump to that location and begin running the program. This one here is the zero command. It's basically going to jump back to RAM clear. It's going to clear the RAM and start over. Step, um, like I said, step is actually not programmed at the moment, so it's not even in there. And then the last one is the reset. Basically, all it does is it jumps back to, you know, um, the beginning of the um, beginning of the assembly code, and then it just kind of starts running from there. And uh, matter of fact, if we look at reset. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Mm, I'm not even seeing it. I think it's not even uh, listed in here. But anyways, that's basically the sum of the software for this. It's not very complicated software. Like I said, this is very basic I.O. It's just reading addresses and jumping to those addresses, putting data in, and that's about it. Now, once you get down to page 5 here, um, I've got this portion here, beginning of a serial monitor OS. If you were to actually, of course, let me get this. If you were to actually have, um, where is it? Oh, here we go. If we were to actually have this portion of the code be true, to where it did jump to um, the routine uh, sear boot, you'd end up jumping over to this right here. Now, in this particular um, routine, all it does is it writes the data that you see on the display whenever I boot to it. And then basically it goes to an initialization, which it um, does a single no-op, and then it begins initializing the things that it needs to. At this point, there is nothing to initialize because it's not written. So all it does is it jumps right back up to the original. So there's nothing really there. It's just a continuous loop. It's an endless loop. It just goes round and round and round and round and round. So at the moment, that's it for the um, software. Uh, there's not much to it. Um, you know, like I said, uh, it's got enough room on the ROM to where it could ha hold a, um, for example, um, uh, assembly language monitor, um, possibly, you know, um, basic and ROM. I mean, I think even Microsoft basic is only like 8K. So that's more than enough to, you know, have basic in there. Um, there's more than enough to have, you know, for example, a fourth interpreter in there, most likely. There's tons of things that you can do it with it. Um, probably not something as complicated as CPM because CPM requires you to have RAM on the uh, lower uh, address bus. Um, you'd have to come up with, you know, a new scheme for banking memory and that's just not something I'm working on with this particular computer. I'm not even interested in, I own a couple other um, do-it-yourself uh, computers and I've seen Grant Searle's, um, you know, CPM on a breadboard and all those things. There's other ways that you can get something like this. This is just something of my own design that I'm working on as just kind of a, a fun little thing to do. Uh, the software hasn't really been messed with since um, probably the end of November, so it's been about a month since I've even messed with it. But at the moment, <clears throat> everything seems to be working. Um, I've still got a few things to do as far as timing goes with the computer itself. So I'm going to be working on that, um, and then I'll start adding in peripherals. And once I do that, at that point, the software development will really begin. Once I start, you know, implementing serial ports and uh, mass storage and things of that nature, at that point, we're going to sit down and start working more on the software of this. Uh, for the time being, though, I have managed to actually get a, oops, I'll show you this, I have uh, hopefully quieted down the fan quite a bit. Um, it does have, um, a, this is basically a 25 ohm pot. All it's going to do is it's going to slow down the fan itself and hopefully in doing that it's going to make it much quieter so maybe now in the future videos you'll actually be able to hear what I'm trying to say whenever I'm showing you this. It's still somewhat loud, um, especially whenever the microphone is so close to the computer, but you know, given that it does have a fan on it, it does need the fan. Uh, that voltage regulator just gets too hot without it, even with the heat sink. 
I mean, it doesn't get hot to the touch, but after running it for about 15 minutes, it was definitely getting uh, warm enough that I was concerned about the capacitors up here. So, um, yeah, we're, we're going to leave a fan on it. I tried running it at 5 volts. It probably cooled it off enough, but I'm not sure how reliable that would be, especially if it's running for several hours at a time. So I'm not going to use 5 volt, and I'm going to go ahead and continue to use 12 volt, and I'll just adjust the um, current with the pot that I've installed down here. And of course, that's already wired up. Um, I'm not going to show it to you right now because it's pointless. But in the future videos, you'll see it, and we'll just kind of go from there. Now, this video was actually done for a viewer who wanted to know something about the software of the computer itself. Um, if there's anything specifically that you'd like to know about the software, you know, I don't mind if you, you know, leave a comment, I'll, you know, discuss it with you, you know, um, personally, but at the end of the day, it's one of those things. It's not complicated enough to really, uh, devote too much time to it at this moment. It's just, it's too simplistic. I, I think that, you know, the length of this video is probably overkill for it because there's really not that much to it. We're talking 150 bytes worth of code here. So having said that, um, any other questions about this, be happy to answer them. If you have uh, comments about it, Feel free to leave it below, and aside from that, we'll see you on the next update.